need to make sure you guys are level. Oh, gatsy, gatsy. <laughs> Let there be light. Okay, welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna be eating a piece of watermelon. So before we get into the video, our Afrikaans word of the day, which is something that we do, is going to be Wartelmoon, okay? Watermelon. So it's actually spelled water, which is water, and lemon, lemon, okay? But we kind of don't say it right, we just say Wartelmoon. Okay, anyway, so without further ado, has the sported precision rifle gotten so expensive that it's inaccessible for the average person out there? You know, Vortex recently announced their new Gen 3 Razor. On their website, the price is $4,000. In South Africa, the recommended retail price is 90,000 Rand. It's very expensive. Okay. The new ACC is not actually up there behind me, but the HMT26 from MDT is that chassis over there. Ridiculously expensive. The new ACC is probably going to push $2,000. Okay. So that begs the question, and it, it sort of got me thinking. Has the sport gotten to the point where it's become unaffordable to the average person? Now, just like you, when I read the comments, you know, I see there are many people that are super pumped for these new products because I am always super pumped for new products. But then there are also people that say like, listen, who's going to buy a $3,000 optic? Now, a lot of people said, who's going to buy a zero press that's standing there behind me? Area 419 cannot make those fast enough. It's an amazing piece of kit. But anyway, that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is when you actually stop and you think about it, these companies, let's use Vortex and MBT as an example. You know, since I started shooting, the Razer Gen 2 had always been the go-to, you know, sort of high-end optics in Vortex's arsenal. And since that time, okay, so this was 2017. In 2018, they announced the PSD Gen 2. So for the goal of the discussion, we're sticking to sort of first focal plane optics. PSD Gen 2, which was a phenomenal scope, they came out with the Diamondback Tactical, okay, super budget-friendly first focal plane optic. Probably not the best glass in the world, but it also didn't cost an arm and a leg. Then they came out with the Venom, okay, which is also first focal plane, really cool. And honestly, out of all of those four that I've just mentioned, or the three that I've mentioned, the fourth one is my personal favorite and sort of the latest rendition of their budget-friendly first focal plane scope, the Strike Eagle 5 to 25 by 56. It's a phenomenal scope. And then they've come out with the Gen 3 Razor. So they've basically given us four more affordable options that really kind of tick all the boxes that you can use any day. And if you're a competent shooter, you can do well. Same sort of situation with our friends over at MBT. You know, they've come out with the RX line. Okay, it's a sort of separate company, but it does fall under that MDT umbrella. So that first RX chassis, and the reason I say first RX chassis, there is another RX chassis coming. Okay, so more on that later. And then they obviously also came out with the XRS that you guys see behind me on the wall. Those two are phenomenal chassis options for somebody looking to sort of enter that market. And they know we're near $2,000, okay? What's also really cool is they've given you extra options to add a little bit more features and stuff like that with the enhanced sort of fore end we have on the XRS now. Companies like Bat Machine, for example, have come out with a full custom action for a thousand bucks. Okay, that's insane. We've also got pre-fit barrels now. So you can screw off your barrel, put a pre-fit on there, and you're off to the races. There's no more gunsmithing, all of those things required. So I think if we sort of take a step back and forget about the prices on the new stuff, you know, because it is quite easy to, you know, get sort of caught up on that. Oh, everything is so expensive now. But these companies have been making it easier for the average person or us to remain in the game. Because quite honestly, and I've done this, so it's not just something that I'm saying. I'll take that XRS any day of the week, okay, and go shoot a match with it and probably do really well with the match. I've taken a Gen 2 Razor off my match gun, put a Diamondback Tactical on my match gun and gone and gotten a second place finish at an NRL match. So really the gear, yes, at the top end of the game, it is gonna make a difference. Hang on, my doorbell's gonna ring now. I need to go get somebody's FedEx package off to them. Stand by. So essentially what I was saying is, it doesn't matter what gear you have. If you're a really good shooter, 
you should be able to do relatively well in a precision rifle match with sort of the gear I listed. I mean, hell, we could even throw in something like the LSS Gen 2 chassis. You know, it's not quite ACC territory, but it kind of, you know, it ticks a lot of boxes if you want a chassis system and you want to get out of your plastic stock that your Hauer came in or your Ruger American or whatever. Or maybe you just got a barreled action and you need some kind of stock or chassis to put it into. Now, having said that, the sort of high-end stuff it's very necessary because there is a portion of the market that will want to look for those marginal gains. You need to see bullet trace a little bit better. So a Gen 3 Razor is probably going to be an advantage for a very small percentage of the sort of top of the top shooters. But the big advantage here, and this is something we see, it's quite evident or something like, you know, here's the Gen 3s in there, but over here is the Strike Eagle. Now, as the technology gets better, Stuff like locking turrets and those kind of things, they trickle down into products like this at an affordable level. Same thing we see with racing cars, you know, the technology trickles down to sort of the consumer versions eventually. And that's really cool for the sport as a whole, because all of a sudden now you can have first focal plane, locking turrets, all of those wonderful things with a really good reticle for, you know, less than a third of the price of a Gen 3 Razor. So I'm super stoked on that. And we should be. So let's not get too, you know, sort of negative with all the prices going up. One thing we also have to keep in mind with the sort of global supply chain shenanigans that have been going on, the cost of steel and aluminium, 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 pick one, has more than doubled. Okay, so it has gotten more expensive for these companies to manufacture these things. Anyway, so I'm tempted to say penny for your thoughts, but I wouldn't want to make the sport more expensive than it already is, because there is no denying, no matter what gear you have, if you do precision rifle as a sport or long range shooting, just running your rifles, in other words, buying your components, your powder, your primers, if you can find them, that is expensive already. So with the cost of the gear and stuff going up, you know, I, I get it. I just wanted to kind of make this video to say we shouldn't forget about the really cool, sort of budget friendly stuff we've gotten along the way as a result of the high-end stuff that's come out. I hope that makes sense. Maybe a little bit of a rant. Anyway, Afrikaans word of the day, Vartlemoon goes on super well, just like a cold beer, especially when it's 45 odd degrees Celsius outside. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Leave me a comment and I look forward to seeing you gentlemen, ladies, cats and dogs, and everybody watching this video in the next one. That was risky. Bye.